Welcome to the program. Today we'll talk about that good old Trump effect and what it means for stocks. We'll talk about the RBA governor and what he said last night and we'll take a look at stocks, the ones you should follow and the ones you should dump. I'm Marty Switzer. I'm Peter Switzer. And we're mad, mad about, about money. money. Pete, you don't have many words today, so let's get straight to it. Mm. The Trump effect. Uh, markets are up seven days in a row. Can the rally last? And do we believe in this Trump phenomenon? Yeah, there will be a sell-off. It won't be a, a nasty sell-off. The, the bottom line is this. There's been a re-evaluation of what Trump stands for. And they're now focused on these economic policies and they've liked the idea of infrastructure spending, tax cuts, and the overall confidence implications of Trump. I really wish that Mark, these guys had worked this out before the election. I wouldn't have been so negative. But the bottom line is, as long as he doesn't come up with anything crazy, like a 45% tariff and a tariff war on China, all that sort of stuff, if he's able to back away from some of his silly uh, promises to get into power, mm. then I think there's, there's going to be like a confident circuit breaker, which is which Trump will be uh, right around the world. And I interviewed someone from PwC last night on my show, and those tax changes could lead to other countries, you know, trying to match them because some com big American companies could come home. They could leave Ireland. They could leave mm. Holland or whatever. So as a consequence, it could be a really good tax effect worldwide. The big issue that um, has been <coughs> talked about in the markets at the moment is what's happening with with, with bonds mm. and the the, the, the uh, prospect of a of a, of a crash. Explosion so just for for the viewers' perspective. Yeah. How's that all coming about? Is that based on the idea that Trump will stimulate the economy? As a result, he'll do that quite quickly. He'll be spending. That will mean interest rates will rise faster, yeah. and then that that'll have an impact on on, on bond prices. Yeah. The people who talk about a real bond market problem are probably speeding up the the rate of interest rate increases that will actually happen. If you listen, forecasting that'll speed if you up. Look at the central bank. Central banks still believe, like most chief <coughs> economists in Australia, think that interest rates in Australia are on hold for all 2017 and they might not move into 2018 and most of them are saying they'll go down. So this bond market thing is a worry but I think it's being exaggerated. Mm. Let's move on to interest rates <coughs> now back right. home in Australia. Philip Lowe, um, RBA Governor, spoke last night. Yeah. Um, he gave a speech. Positive or negative, give us a quick summation of what he said and what we need to know. Well, if you read the Fin Review, you'd be worried about Why him. Why would you read that? Trump. You read the Switzer Super Report. Exactly right. And, and I've made the point. And I, I actually had Ann Anderson, the head of fixed uh, income at UBS, sitting beside me as we watched the speech last night on the TV show. And she concluded, before I did, this was an optimistic speech. So Lowe has got a good view on the Aussie economy going forward. He noted that there are worries and concerns, but he thinks that we have good buffers in place in Australia to cope with it. And one of them was the fact that a lot of Australian households have overpaid their mortgages to the extent of about two and a half years. He said that's a really good buffer for all those people worried about banks' balance sheets and stuff like that linked to the housing sector. He's not worried about that at this point in time, despite the fact we read these stories in the newspaper. I like what he said. I'm now going to call him Dr. Phil. He's going to be the doctor for the Aussie economy. I like this governor. He's better than that bloke from the Shire. <laughs> He's not a bad bloke, but he, he wasn't the excitement machine. Okay. Last topic. Let's move on to stocks. Yeah. Um, ones to follow and ones to dump at the moment. Yeah. Well, interestingly, because of Trump, and even before Trump, there was this move to growth stocks, and that's what's going to happen. And a lot of fund managers are now dumping... How to yield into growth. He's right. And a lot of the, the fund managers are dumping those yield plays, stocks, you know, uh, like Transurban, Sydney Airport. I think for anyone who's a yield chaser, people who want income in their portfolio, there's going to be great buying opportunities over the next few months. And it's a, it's a chance to buy companies like Telstra at much lower prices, yeah. but the dividend is still going to be there. So I think that's the ones I'm going to be looking for. Good buying opportunities. Being a contrarian often pays off. Remember, no one wanted to buy BHP at $14? Yeah. Well, yeah. I know I'm sounding like froggy here, aren't I? Yeah. But it's still good advice. Yeah, particularly rates on hold for, 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 for the near future. Yep. The people still need income. Correct. That's all we've got time for. I'm Marty Switzer. I'm Peter Switzer. And we're, we're mad, mad about, about money. money.